Right, here we are once again. I am uh, just outside of Smithers, BC, at a place called Telqua. And the, uh, there's a canyon here where the river blasts through. I'm sure you can hear the sound of the roaring river. I'm, I'm up above about 100 feet. I'm going to walk down and get a little closer view. Uh, so I'm heading west. It's the farthest west I've ever been on the northern highway from Prince George. Um, sadly, uh, I passed a sign. Uh, it's only a few hundred meters from here that says, Girls don't hitchhike on the highway of tears. And over the decades, the stretch between Prince George and Prince Rupert has been... Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, has had many tales of sadness and grief. Um, and the belief seems to be that uh, hitchhikers, female hitchhikers, have been murdered um, uh, along the journey here. And this was part of the inquiry, uh, national inquiry into the missing and murdered indigenous women that, that came out several years ago. Uh, so there's some dark stories along this highway. I'm not gonna frame a, uh, something out of a horror movie. I'm gonna just make the observation that some sadness has come of this. Now let me see here if I can get the... Look at that, there's the canyon. There's a chute back there. There's still a nice big cornice. Frozen. That's, I guess, where the spray from the river has come up. And it still gets pretty cold overnight, so we would have... Uh, we would have... Freezing happening from the mist from the uh, river, but there's still there's still frost pockets along the way, and um, still snow-capped mountains. Let me spin around here so you can see behind me. Like look at the spectacular view. So we get some of these snow caps. I'll just give a little spin around. Love this tracking. Oh, the camera just doesn't do the mountains justice. Uh, it really is breathtaking. And behind me, I'll spin again. Those mountains uh, are incredible. Um, Smithers is the farthest I've been. That's only about 15 or 20 kilometers back. I was there in my very last year of tree planting in 1998 before my son was born. It was a ski resort there, and after a day of tree planting, we used to go to the, the lodge for uh, Apri Ski, which seemed really uh, out of place uh, for a bunch of tree planters, um, all in uh, all in scruffies. Uh, even our good day off clothes are uh, shit clothes by by most standards. Um, so I made contact with my friend George. In the Nass Valley, he's about three hours from here. Um, it looks like I'll spend two or three days in the region, hopefully spend some time with him, share some stories. I brought some medicine that I made uh, and some gifts. And I hope to have some good conversations with him. I've been thinking a lot about this. I've had 1,250 kilometers or 1,300 kilometers since yesterday that I've had time to think about stuff and you know um, what I'm remembering I guess of what I'm seeing and hearing uh, the thoughts I'm having are about our humanity George and I encountered each other at a particular time in my life where he had a message for me and um, I won't get into too many details 
Uh, he has been caring for his father, who has a disability for a number of years. He's lived a life, simple life, uh, working from the sea and from the land. Doesn't own any things and has, um, he is regularly asked to teach at the local schools in the traditional language and he can earn money from doing that, but he doesn't pursue money for money's sake. Um, for that matter, neither do I. Uh, you gotta forgive me, I'm walking down here to this gorgeous natural feature. Um, seems very interesting. reminds me so there's a lava field oh my god there's a lava field near here and uh, the rock here seems uh, igneous reminds me a bit of uh, where I grew up in Chile spent time there for a while as a kid um, not getting too close to the cliff let me just turn around Let's see if we can get some of that canyon. Pretty spectacular. Uh, real life, uh, can't imagine, maybe a kayak coming through there. Someone brave enough to put a helmet on, come down the chute, but uh, not something I would attempt. And it looks like the water comes up pretty high here during the spring melt and the runoff because there's a, a good pile of uh, this planter, we call that schnarb. Good pile of schnarb there. That's a little story. Uh, I started tree planting 30 years ago, a year and a bit out of high school, finished my first year of college, and would, uh, would come up north in the summertime to plant trees. And all in all, I planted uh, just shy of 400,000 trees. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that from the point of view of meditation and, and training the mind. But uh, I used to go through small town BC and I've been passing through a bit of small town BC. There we go. And every restaurant you went into, there's very few chains. Every, every restaurant you went into had the same salt and pepper shakers the same kinds of glasses and the same kinds of cutlery and little uh, creamer dispensers for your sugar and your coffee cream that sat on the table didn't matter where you went and I always used to laugh because I'd read the book Generation X by Douglas Copeland and he called these small town places Marge Diners Marge short for marginal perhaps but Marge being the name of the waitress who waited on you. And in small town Canada, you very often see Steve's Garage and uh, Bob's Hardware Store, because everybody knows who Steve is and everybody knows who Bob is. And that's just how, how small town Canada was. And now I'm passing through those same small towns. I drove through Williams Lake last night, neon signs and restaurant uh, beacons, all uh, navigating some mud here. Uh, you know, kind of emerging out of the darkness 
at nine or 10 o'clock at night as you descend into a valley or come around a curve and all of a sudden there it is lit up like Las Vegas. And there don't seem to be that many Marge towns anymore. And one wonders whether Marge saved up enough of her tips over the years and bought the A&W franchise or, or uh, the McDonald's or whether some, some traffic study somewhere said that, you know what, uh, Smithers, Smithers needs another chain restaurant because there's enough traffic going through it, enough tourism that it's going to be profitable. And so McDonald's franchisees or McDonald's corporate would come in and build them up. Awful lot of changes in Canada over the last several decades. There we go, walking back to the car. I couldn't resist this. I've passed up on several stops and several incredible views and I came around the corner in the car saw that water crashing through the canyon and I just couldn't I couldn't help but stop and stretch my legs my name is Shannon Douglas this is while we were asleep